Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawtonen from the Flourish Academy, and today we will be extending studio backdrops using generative fill inside of Photoshop. But first, make sure you visit our website, www.flourish.academy for free resources and to learn more about our courses. And join us in our private Facebook community where we support photographers of all levels. And if you need any camera equipment or gear, please visit our sponsor, ymcamera.com. You will be supporting a small family owned business. I'm currently working inside of Photoshop beta version 24.7, and that's important because it is changing daily. When I prepare for these screencasts, of course I test my images, and every time I've tested these two photographs, something different has happened. So <laughs> it's very unpredictable, and I'm not quite sure what we're going to get today. Let's begin by pressing M on our keyboard to grab the marquee tool. And I'm going to make a selection just inside of the backdrop itself to grab it. And I'm just going to ask Photoshop to generate a fill. I'm not going to give it a prompt because I'd like to see what it produces without any information. Wow, and version one looks pretty good. Version two, not so much. Version three, no. Now, of course, there are our shadows, there's some modeling, but this photo has not been edited yet and that's a really easy cleanup. So let's try the other side. We have our marquee tool going to select this area, generate, generate, and see what happens. Also, not bad. Definitely some lighting issues. I think version three looks the best, but again, I would go in with probably some dodging and smoothing in order to make this backdrop look better, but it didn't do a bad job. However, I am curious if I turn off these layers and go back to my background layer and make this selection not that close to her back. Let me press Command or Control D to deselect and go at it from this direction. What I normally would have done prior to generative fill is made the selection and then gone to Edit, Content Aware Scale, and I just would have done this. Dragged it out to the right beyond the canvas, press Enter or Return, in order to commit that, Command or Control D, of course you end up with that line. So I was just curious if that, okay. <laughs> okay, things are going sideways really quickly. The point is generative fill worked much better than content aware scale. I know I could have taken my time and done a better job, but I think you get the point. I'm curious to see what happens with this image because we have the studio backdrop and the rug. So let's go ahead and make this selection, generative fill generate, again, without a prompt, just because I'm curious and a little bit lazy. Okay, that is incredibly impressive to me. Uh, and just to be clear, I'm not lazy. I just wanna see if it works without me giving it a prompt because if it does, then why would you waste your time? I'd like to be as efficient as possible. Let's look through these different versions. This is actually unbelievable. They all look pretty good. I think I prefer version one. Let's select the background layer and again, make this selection. We don't have a lot of the background here, so I'm not sure what Photoshop is going to do. Okay, again, I am actually pretty impressed with how that looks. I might pull up on the rug a little bit here on the left, but that's pretty amazing. If we look at the before and after, there are only very minor things I would need to do to make this image complete. And because we got through those images so quickly, I thought we would take a look at this last one because it's pretty complex. I would have to anticipate that this right side would generate fairly well, but again, it is incredibly unpredictable, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, it really surprises me some days. I, I'm pretty delighted with how that looks, but on the left side, we obviously have significantly more issues to deal with, so instead of using the marquee tool, I'm going to grab my lasso tool and 
just kind of make a selection around these things. I do not have high hopes for this. So we'll see what happens without a prompt because we have so many edges and there's just complexity in the removal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> This is where the generative fill goes sideways. It added ad additional care. Oh, okay. That's actually not bad. All right. So we could work with this and then we would have to just remove this. Let me zoom in and look at that. Command or Control Plus on the keyboard. Cleaning up the shadow issues is pretty easy. Getting rid of this might be more interesting. Whoa, why don't we try? Okay, I have an idea. What if we selected the background, grabbed our quick select tool, made the brush smaller with the left bracket key, and started to... Oh, it's getting a little bit wacky. So I'm going to hold down Alter Option to subtract and see if I can just grab whatever it put behind and tissue paper or something. I'm not sure even what that is. So I am making this selection, trying to keep this little guy out of the selection. I don't know what's going to happen here. This is crazy. Let's generate and see. Okay, it, exactly nothing happened. Is that what I'm picking up on? Yeah, <laughs> that looks pretty clear. I wonder, let's delete that layer. I wonder if we made that selection again by going select, reselect. And this time we told Photoshop to replace with the blue studio backdrop that is already there. And the reason I added that last part is because if I just said replace with a blue studio backdrop, well, you could get just about anything. There was blue and a studio backdrop, <laughs> but it might not match. Okay, I feel like Photoshop and I are just not communicating well, which isn't surprising. Again, I did not have high hopes for this particular portion of the image. However, we did get to this point pretty quickly. And with some touch-ups on the background and maybe using a different healing tool in order to clean this area up, I, I think I could probably do that pretty quickly. But that's not the point of this video. I just wanted to see how generative fill worked with studio backdrops. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.